Hi kids! Welcome back to learning about the life of Jesus. So far we've learned about his birth in Bethlehem. Then a few days later we learned that Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple and dedicated him to God. That's when he met Simeon and Anna and they knew that he was God's son. And last week we learned about Jesus as a kid. Remember, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem. And while they were in Jerusalem, it was a big city, there was a festival going on, and they lost Jesus. But Jesus wasn't scared. He hung out at the church or the temple, and he taught people, and he learned, listened and learned about the Jewish way of life and the customs. And eventually, Mary and Joseph came and found Jesus. Now, that's all that we know about Jesus as a kid. And so, we jump ahead now. Uh, we're jumping to Jesus when he was about 30 years old. We're going to learn about Jesus and a guy named John. Now, some of you might remember that we talked about John very, very quickly just before Christmas. John was Jesus' cousin, and he was almost the same age as Jesus. He was just a few months older than Jesus was. And John had a very special and very specific job. John was a prophet. Do you remember what prophets are? What do prophets do? Can you remember? Let's see. Prophets hear from God, and they tell the people. Exactly. Let's do that again. One, two, three. They hear from God and tell the people. John was a prophet. John was going around everywhere and telling the people that God had sent the person to earth who would save them. They needed to get ready because God was about to do something big. John was telling everyone that Jesus was God's son and that Jesus could rescue them from their sins. Today we're going to find out what happens when Jesus and John meet up at a river. But before that, I want to play a game with you. You see all this stuff back here? Uh, we're going to play a game of Will It Float? Now you might not be able to tell, but over here in this vase tub thing, there's actually water. I'll spin it around a bit. I'll show you. See if I can spray you a bit. Did you get wet? Oh, I did. There is water in there. So, we're going to play a game of Will It Float? And I have a whole bunch of items here, and I'm going to get you guys to guess, is that item going to float or not? Now, some of you might have this set up at home, too. You might have some of these items around home and a jug of water. Uh, go ahead and play along if you want. Now, I think we'll start with what I think is a pretty easy option. Let's see this one. A fork. Do you think a fork is going to float? Let me know. Say yes or no. So yes meaning it will float and no meaning it will not float. It will sink to the bottom. Are you ready? Will a fork float? Okay, let's see. Ready? Well, a fork does not float. A fork sinks right to the bottom. Now here's the hard part. I need to uh, undo my button so I can get the fork out of the water. Okay, what's next? Let's see, what about a marker? Do you think a marker will float? One, two, three, Okay, let's see. Ready? The marker floated. It bounced down and came right back up. So a marker floats. 
Now, let's see about a crayon. A crayon's a little different than a marker. A marker is plastic on the outside, a crayon doesn't. Do you think a crayon is going to float? Okay, let's check it out. The crayon sunk right to the bottom. I was shocked by that. I thought for sure a crayon would float. They're so light. I thought it would float. I wonder why it sinks. All right, what about a little person? A plastic toy. Is that going to float or is that going to sink? Let's see. You were right, it floats. A little person floats. All right, let's try. Here's a fun one. A potato. That's kind of weird. A potato. It's kind of heavy. Do you think a potato is going to float or is it going to sink? I guess. Let's see. It floats. Look at it floating there. Okay, so a potato floats. Now, I've gotten off of my question a little bit, so we're going to fix that again. Let's try an orange. Now, this is more a clementine, same thing. Uh, just in our house, we like to eat clementines instead of oranges. So, will a clementine float? Yes or no? Okay, let's see. I thought it was going to sink for a second, but then it bounced right back up. Now, here's a question. I'm going to do this one. The same. For this one, I unwrapped it. I took the peeling off of the clementine. Do you think this clementine is going to float or is it going to sink? Ready? Will it float? Yes or no? Okay, if you say so, boys and girls, let's see. It did float. It floated just like the other one. Although, it's not floating quite as easily. It's kind of shaking around there. Now, oh, here's a fun one. Now, if you're doing this at home, this may change, depending, but we'll see. Do you think an egg will float? Yes or no? Will an egg float? All right, let's see. I'm not going to drop it from very high because I don't want it to break if it hits the bottom. Oh, the egg sunk. It sunk right down to the bottom. Now, I've heard rumors that you can test an egg. If it sinks to the bottom, it's fresh. That means it's good to eat. But if it floats, then it might be getting a little old and you might want to eat it right away before it goes bad. So that is, oh, I forgot to take this out. Let's get the egg. Take the egg out now. I have two items left. What about a can of pop? Do you think that a can of Coke is going to float or is it going to sink? It's kind of heavy. What do you think? Will a can of Coke float? All right, let's see. It sunk. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it did. It sunk. I heard it hit the bottom. It didn't float at the top. So a can of Coke will sink. It is heavy. Now here's a question. What about a can of Diet Coke? Is a can of Diet Coke going to sink or is it going to float? I guess. Will a can of Diet Coke float? Okay. Let's see. A can of Diet Coke. It's floating. Well, that's weird. It's the same size as a can of Coke. It's the same weight as a can of Coke. Why isn't the Diet Coke floating? Well, I did some research and found out that apparently because there's less sugar in the Diet Coke, it floats. But there's way more sugar in the Coke, and so it sinks right down to the bottom. The sugar weighs it down in the water. Were you surprised by any of the things that floated or didn't? I know I was. I thought this would sink for sure. And I thought that the egg would float. I mean, it's light. 
It's an egg, and I really thought that the crayon would float. It's light. I figured it would float as well. Some of these items were surprising. Some floated when I thought they would sink. Some sank when I thought that they would float. In today's story, there are some really surprising things that happen. Let's watch and see what some of the surprising things that happen when Jesus and John meet at the river. John the Baptist lived in the wilderness. His clothes were made out of camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. John began telling people, repent and be baptized because God's kingdom is almost here. Some people asked John, who are you? John said, I am not the Messiah. John also said he wasn't Elijah and he wasn't the prophet that God had promised to send after Moses. Who are you then, they asked. Long before John was born, the prophet Isaiah said, someone is shouting in the wilderness. He says, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Isaiah was talking about John. John had a very important job. He was supposed to get people ready for Jesus, God's promised Messiah. People started to repent. They turned away from their sins and turned to God for forgiveness. Then John baptized them in the Jordan River. Baptism was a picture that the people's sins had been washed away. John preached, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. By this time, Jesus was an adult. He went to see John the Baptist at the Jordan River. When John saw Jesus, he said, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus told John that he wanted to be baptized, but John didn't think he should baptize Jesus. I need you to baptize me, John said. Why do you want me to baptize you? John was confused. He baptized people who confessed their sins. Jesus never sinned. Jesus said, allow me to be baptized. God says this is right. So John agreed and he baptized Jesus. Jesus immediately came up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens opened and Jesus saw the Holy Spirit coming down on him like a dove. God's voice came from heaven. This is my son, the voice said. I love him and I am very pleased with him. Jesus never sinned but he obeyed God and was baptized like sinners are baptized. Baptism reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection. It reminds us that when we trust in Jesus, we turn from sin and start a new life, a life lived for Jesus. Baptism is something that we do when we want to tell the world and say to people, yes, I follow Jesus. I believe in Jesus and I want to follow him. And so it was really confusing to John when Jesus came up and said, John, I want to be baptized. Baptize me. Because although John was baptizing people, he was baptizing them to prepare them for Jesus coming. And Jesus said, I want to be baptized. And so that really confused John. That didn't make sense to John. That didn't make sense to a lot of people. He said, you don't need to be baptized. We are baptizing because we are saying, I want to follow God. I want to follow Jesus. You are Jesus. You don't need to follow Jesus. See, it doesn't make sense. You can't follow yourself. But Jesus said, I want to show people that I do follow God. God is my father and I follow him. And so Jesus was baptized by John in the river. And then the other really surprising thing, a dove came out of the sky. A voice from heaven called out and said, this is my son. In him, I am pleased. When Jesus got baptized, God was overjoyed. He was happy. He was excited that Jesus was stepping out and saying, I am going to follow God. I'm going to do what he wants. 
Sometimes it's hard to follow God. Sometimes it's hard to do what he wants. Sometimes things in life are surprising and we don't know how to follow God. But we can trust and know that God loves us and cares for us and is pleased when we do the right thing, when we follow him. Jesus did the right thing. He was baptized in the river, just as God had wanted. And later on in his life, Jesus commands and tells us to be baptized. If we follow him, if we love him, if we want to uh, be followers of Jesus, we are baptized to show the world that we follow Jesus. So boys and girls, this kicks off the ministry of Jesus. In the next few weeks, we're going to be talking all about the things that Jesus did, the things that Jesus taught. Next week, we're going to be looking at what happens when Jesus gets tempted to do something bad. Have you ever been tempted to do something wrong? It happened to Jesus. And so we're going to see what he does when he's tempted to do something bad and hopefully learn what we can do when we're tempted to do something bad, when somebody wants to do us to do something bad, something that we shouldn't. Boys and girls, thanks for having fun with me today. Thanks for discovering what things float and what things don't. Thanks for watching and learning all about Jesus and how he wanted to follow God. And to do that, he wanted to show people that he would do that by being baptized. Have a good week, everyone.